In this tutorial, we dive deeper into the Spring Framework application context and how we can integrate it with our Jakarta AEE8 web application. This is the high level overview. It is a container managing beans in a Spring application and it manages the bean lifecycle dependency injection, event handling, and internationalization. The lifecycle management is all about the bean creation, initialization, and instruction. The dependency injection handles the automatic dependency injection. The event handler supports publishing and listening for events. Then there is internationalization, allows you to internationalize your messages. And finally, there is a built-in bean factory with additional functionalities. Here is the implementation classes of the Spring application context. We have the annotation config application context. We have the class path XML application context. We have the file system XML application context. We have the generic application context and also the web application context. Now we're going over to the course documentation, our Spring Framework review, and there is our Spring application context document. And as we can see, this is a detailed view of everything that we've just covered in our slideshow, our key features, and our implementation classes. Back in Eclipse, and we are in our Spring Context Start Git branch, and we'll create a new Maven module my spring mvc we will create a simple project and skip the archetype selection so eclipse created the new project for us it included the POM file, and if we look at our root POM, it also included the module. Now back to our generated POM file, and what we'll do is we will update it according to our already defined parity registration POM. Everything is pretty much the same except for the addition of the Spring Framework and of course the names. And now we're going to add our Spring XML context configuration for our web app and it will live underneath the web INF folder. And we'll call it spring config XML. And this is what it looks like. We've got our component scan definition, got our annotation driven definition. And we see also that we have a view resolver bean that we'll create later. Now we also want to update our web.xml config file according to our charity registration definition file. So we'll add a new web.xml and we'll bring over what we need from charity configuration. And we see a couple of changes. We now have the context config location of the spring config XML file that we just created. We have a definition of the web context context load listener. We have a definition of the spring dispatcher servlet. And we see that we need to create 
the servlet context.xml for this one. We have our JSP config and our session config pretty much as is from our charity registration form. So let's create the servlet context.xml. And this is what our servlet context.xml looks like. See that we define a hello controller as our one and only Spring Bean, and we also mark it as annotation driven. Let's create our hello controller. And we see here is our defined hello controller with a map for the servlet. And we do a model attribute. And our message says hello spring MVC. And then we return the spring UI model. Obviously, that means we need to add the associated UI elements in our JSP folder. We define our views folder and in our views folder we define the hello.jsp this is where we display the view message from the spring dispatcher servlet keeping with our charity registration we will also add a jsp folder and in this folder we will add our base JSP fragment and we remove the registration relevant code. And at this stage, we are ready to run our demonstration project. And there we have it. We have our Hello World from Spring MVC. And that concludes this tutorial. I will see you in the next one.